The unexpected victory of the League forces at the Battle of East Welterkeep has left the situation in South Azure on a knife's edge. But we are going to have to wait until the next strategic turn to discover what the players will do about that front. This battle report will take us back to the Lambridge region. At the last moment, the League forces sent an overwhelming attack into the small town of Willowham. The Corbin forces were expecting an attack in this region, but not at that location. This will be the last battle of Strategic Turn 4, and this is the Battle of Willowham. Welcome to Willowham. This town is nestled on the western bank of Turtle Creek. The creek itself is shallow and has no effect on the movement of mechs, but wheeled vehicles would not be able to ford the creek. Therefore, the bridge is key terrain for the movement of light scouts, which are used by both sides in this war. The bridge has a construction factor of 6, the commercial buildings have a construction factor of 4, and the residential buildings in this region have a construction factor of 1. Willowham in itself is not a strategic location, but it is on the doorstep to the town of Limestead which both sides have identified as being key to holding the province of Lambridge. With that being said, House Corbin players have stated to me that they don't think he will win this battle, especially with such overwhelming attacking numbers, but they will instead, if tactically feasible, stay on the map long enough to down as many of the attacking Chupacabra's forces. Defending Willingham is House Corbin's 6th mech company, comprised of two battle lances and a fire lance. The Fire Lance has a trebuchet, a longbow, and two archers with sniper as their special pilot ability. The other two lances are heavy battle lances, each comprised of two banshees and two centurions. The attacking Chupacabra force is comprised of two companies, the 4th Combined Arms Company and the newly minted 5th Mech Company. The 4th Combined Arms Company has two lances of medium battle lances, each with two grasshoppers and two hatchetmen. It also has a lance of light wheeled scouts. The 5th Mech Company was formed around the 13th, 14th, and 15th Reserve Lances, which had fought in the Battle of Easterwich. They lost that battle, and they have not had time to hone their skills, so they are still considered green. Also, the three lances each had a destroyed mech, which were replaced by blackjacks. It seems it had been buy two, get one free. The three lances were also reorganized into battle lances when the 5th Mech Company was created. It now has two medium battle lances and one heavy battle lance. The 13th lance is a medium battle lance with a dasher, a wasp, and two blackjacks. The 14th lance is a medium lance with a locust, a wasp, a blackjack, and a wraith. The 15th lance is now a heavy battle lance with a stalker, a vulture, a marauder, and a rifleman. Only the stalker has a mech warrior who has enough experience to be considered a regular. The rest are all green. The Chupacabras have also tasked their heavy strike bombers to strike from orbit, therefore they have four heavy strike battlefield support assets. Before we get into the battle, we once again want to thank our Patreon supporters. We especially want to thank our nobles Ron W and Christopher K for their continued support. We also want to announce we have two new notable nobles worthy of public notification of their notable generosity by joining the nobles of our channel. Thank you Alex and Jerome for your noteworthy contribution to the channel. Here we are at turn 1. We have a house rule for deployment. If you're the defender in a town, you can deploy within 2 inches of a building, as if your mech warriors were quartering there. Yes, yes, death before dismount, but sometimes you just gotta get out and stretch your legs. So House Corbin opted for their red 17th heavy lance to quarter at this water processing plant. The blue 18th heavy lance is split between that industrial building and the mansion that's up on the hill. And the 16th fire lance is hanging out in this mansion. House Corbin won initiative. So the Chupacabras will move and shoot first. The Chupacabras have more units, so they must do proportional movement. Not wanting to dilly-dally, the Chupacabras activate their combined arms company. Will scouts sprint straight down the highway, moving an additional 2 inches since they are wheeled vehicles for a total of 23 inches of movement. Next is the 17th medium battle lance, jumping into the farm fields along the southern region of the battlefield. House Corbin activates their fire lance. Trebuchet jumps into cover, the longbow also moves forward, and the archers take cover behind the mansion. One thing to keep an eye on, these archers are already very effective at short-medium ranges, 
but they're also snipers, giving them an advantage at medium or greater ranges. However, it's up to the player if they can capitalize on that advantage. It's Chupacabra's turn to move proportionally again. She activates her 16th medium battle lance of the Combined Arms Company. They ground move along the bottom of that hill for cover. Next is the Chupacabra's 14th lance of the newly formed 5th Mech Company. The Locust moves into cover and the rest of the battle lance jumps towards the North Farm. House Corbin activates his 18th heavy lance, which moves forward into that gully for cover and for better shooting at the highway and the Chupacabra's moving into the Northern Farm. Finally, the Chupacabras activate their last two units. The 13th Lance ground moved into cover behind trees, while the two Blackjacks jump along the highway. 15th Mech ground moves straight down the road. They are scanning the horizon looking for targets to engage. Last unit to move is House Corbin's 17th Heavy Battle Lance. The Banshees had just enough movement to ground move up the hill next to the Archer. The Satorians climb the steep riverbank and took cover behind the woods. The other Banshee ground moved along the river, but unfortunately may not have line of sight for this shooting. And with that, let's move on to the shooting phase. The Chupacabras will shoot first. And the Chupacabra player wanted to start the battle off with a bang, with her new toys, the Battlefield Support Unit, her Heavy Strikers. She targets the Tan Archer with a target number of 6, and the Heavy Strike nails it, dealing 2 damage to the Archer's armor. The Heavy Strike pulling out of his attack vector, the 17th, 18th, as well as the 13th Lance all take aim at the same Tan Archer as well. The target number ranged from 9 to 12, and they all missed, with the exception of a Grasshopper, which used a lucky point and was able to hit, inflicting 1 damage to the Archer's armor. The house, on the other hand, didn't do so well, so starting next turn, that house no longer provides any cover. The 14th and 15th Lance all open fire on one of the Blue Banshees. At medium range, with various modes of movement and cover, the target number came to a range of 8 to 11. Despite lucky points, only the Wasp hit, dealing 1 damage to the Banshee's armor. House Corbin returns fire. The Trebuchet and Longbow fire at one of the Grasshoppers in the farm fields. Target number was 10 for the Longbow and 12 for the Trebuchet, since it had jumped, and they both missed. Next, the Banshee and two Archers fire at the other Grasshopper. The Banshee's target number was an 11, but the Archers are snipers, so their target number was a 9. One Archer hits, dealing 4 damage to the Grasshopper. The rest of House Corbin's forces fired the Vulture on the highway. The target number ranged from 10 for the Centurions to a 12 for the other mechs, due to the differences in range. Using a lucky point, one of the Centurions hit, dealing 2 damage to the Vulture's armor. That brings turn 1 to a close, both sides exchanging fire. House Corbin, though outnumbered, dished out the most damage in their first exchange of fire. Let's see what happens in turn 2. Before we get into turn 2, I just wanted to point out that this was the moment that the House Corbin players had an epiphany. They realized that they had faced these forces before at the Battle of Easterwich. This realization had no ramification for this battle, but it will have an impact on the decision processing for House Corbin further on in this war. Just wanted to point that out for you. Okay, let's get on to turn 2. House Corbin won initiative again. The Chupacabras will move and shoot first for turn 2. The Chupacabras want to close in fast and disrupt any attempts by House Corbin to retreat. She is also betting that the House Corbin will not waste any of their precious shooting on the Willed Scouts, so she sprints them down the highway towards the bridge. For proportional movement, she also activates her 17th lance and jumps forward into the farm. House Corbin activates his fire lance. The long bow ground moves staying in cover, and the trebuchet jumps deeper into the woods for more cover. The archer ground moves, putting the crest of the hill to its back so next turn they can move down the hill and get cover as they aggress from the fight. The Chupacabras activate two units, their 14th and 15th lance. The Locust of the 14th Lance ground moves up the hill, taking cover behind the woods. The Wasp ground moves behind the cottage, and the Wraith and Blackjack jump forward. The 15th Lance continues down the highway and begins to fan out with the Vulture taking cover behind that commercial building, destroying a wall in the process. House Corbin is starting to feel the mounting pressure. They activate their 18th Lance, which falls back to their original positions. The Chupacabras activate their last two units, the Dasher of the 13th Lance, 
takes cover behind the farmhouse, and the wasp jumps into the dasher's original position. The two blackjacks continue their general advance by jumping forward. The last unit for the chupacabras to move is the 4th Combined Arms 16th Lance, which jumps to the top of this small hill, taking cover in the woods. House Corbin activates their last unit, the 17th Lance. They want to position themselves to draw fire away from their fire lance. Unlikely, but it's still worth a try. So the Banshees advance, while the Centurions stand still in their current positions. The Chupacabras, true to their nature, are aggressively advancing on House Corbin's positions. Will House Corbin be able to blunt their advance with firepower? Let's find out. On to the shooting phase. The Chupacabras will shoot first. Again, the Chupacabras open up their shooting with a sortie from their battlefield support asset, the Heavy Striker, targeting the Tan Archer with a target number of 6, and it missed with Snake Eye. The Chupacabra player really wants to take out those deadly archers. Her 16th and 13th lance fire at the Tan Archer, and the 17th lance shoots at the Camera. Due to range, jumping, and cover, the target numbers range from 8 to 12. With all the firepower, only the Dasher was able to hit the Tan Archer, inflicting 1 damage to the Archer's armor. However, for the Camo Archer, the Grasshopper rolled a 12, healing a critical hit, but unfortunately rolled a 5 which is no critical damage. Bummer for the Chupacabra. Next up, the 14th and 15th Lance continue to fire on the Banshee with the slightly damaged armor. The target number was pretty high due to range and cover. Ultimately, all the mechs missed, and the Chupacabra player was reluctant to use any lucky points with such a high target number. House Corbin can now return fire. The House Corbin players were deciding if they wanted to try to finish off the Vulture, or take down the more dangerous Marauder. In the end, they decided to do both. The 18th Lance fired at the Vulture, and the 17th focused on the Marauder. The target number for the Vulture was 10, and using lucky points, both Banshees hit, dealing 8 damage, which was enough to take out the Vulture. For the Marauder, the target number for the Banshees and Centurion was 8 due to the intervening woods and the Centurion standing still. One Banshee and one Centurion hit, dealing a total of 6 damage to the Marauder's armor. And that brings turn 2 to a close. The Chupacabras, despite bringing overwhelming numbers and offensive aerospace support, can't seem to have effective fire. House Corbin, on the other hand, is having a great shooting and has taken out one of the Chupacabra's mechs. Let's get into turn 3. Here we are in turn 3. The Chupacabras won initiative, so House Corbin will need to move and shoot first this turn. This is when House Corbin players faced a small conundrum. You see, the original defense plan was to harass the Chupacabras advance, fall back to the eastern bank of the river, and using the town for cover to pick off any Chupacabras that crossed the river. If things got too hot, they would retreat off the eastern edge. But now, they seem to be holding strong. So instead of retreating across the river to create space, they decided to hold for one more turn to push their perceived advantage. It's a gamble, but it's also war, and the players make snap decisions in the heat of the moment. So House Corbin activates his 18th Lance, which shuffle dances in their current position to maintain their TMM. For proportional movement, the Chupacabras must activate three units. First they activate the 14th Lance. The Blackjack ground moves forward, the Locust stands still, and the Wraith and Wasp both jump to the top of the hill next to the Locust behind cover of the woods. The next Lance advances to the base of the hill, closing in on the Fire Lance. Finally, the 16th Lance activates, and they all jump forward, continuing their general advance towards the map's center. House Corbin activates their Fire Lance. They want to maintain their medium range and capitalize on the woods for cover. So the Longbow moves deeper into the woods, and the two archers move into cover. The Trebuchet jumps out into the open, but House Corbin is gambling that the Chupacabras won't take it out during the next shooting phase. The Chupacabras need to activate their last three lances. First, the Willed Scouts move to the center of the bridge into Willahan. Next was the 15th Lance. The Marauder's armor was practically falling off, so it moved into cover behind the woods, while the Rifleman and Stalker continue to advance down the road. Finally, the 13th Lance activates. The two Black Jacks advance forward, and the Wasp and Dasher both stand still. House Corbin activates their last unit, the 17th Heavy Battle Lance. The Banshees move in behind the Centurions for cover, and the Centurions stand still. On to the shooting phase. House Corbin really wants to try to take out one or two more mechs before falling back across the river bank. But which mech to fire at? I mean, it is a target-rich environment. 
They finally settle on the Fire Lance shooting at the advancing Red Medium Battle Lance. The two archers will shoot at a Grasshopper and the Longbow and Trebuchet will try to take down one of the Hatchmen. At medium range, the Snipers were able to capitalize on their advantage with target numbers of 8. They both hit dealing a whopping 14 points of damage, which is enough to destroy it, but it will be able to return fire this turn. The Hatchmen had a better target number of 9 for the Longbow and a 10 for the Trebuchet and they both missed. Next, the 17th opened fire on the Rifleman on the highway. The Centurion stood still, so their target number is an 8, and it's a 9 for the Banshees. The Banshees unfortunately miss, but using their lucky points, both Centurions hit, removing 4 points of armor from the Rifleman. House Corbin's 18th Lance wants to take down the Chupacabra's Wraith because it could threaten their lances when they try to fall back across the river. Since it had jumped and is in cover, the target number is a 12, and they all miss. Chupacabra's return fire, and first up is the Heavy Striker, being called in again against the Tan Archer. Target number is still 6, and it nails it, dealing another 2 damage to the Archer's armor. Chupacabra's were still determined to destroy the Fire Lance, especially the two Archers. So the 15th and 16th, as well as the 17th Lance, all take aim at the two Archers to try and take them out. Target numbers range from 8 to 11. This time, the dice rolled better for the Chupacabras, and the lucky points helped too. The Dasher, Grasshopper, and the two Hatchetmen hit the Camo Archer, dealing 8 damage, causing 2 critical hits, both of which were weapons destroyed, reducing the Archer's damage output by 2. As for the Tan Archer, the Rifleman and one of the Blackjacks hit, dealing 6 damage, enough to destroy the Archer. On the other side of the battlefield, the 14th Lance fires at the Centurions in cover at the Mansion but they all miss. Wild Scouts all fire on the slightly damaged Banshee at short range, and three find their target, dealing three damage to the Banshee's armor. That brings turn three to a close. Both sides lost a mech, and one of House Corbin's archers is barely holding itself together, which according to the House Corbin players is an acceptable loss. Now House Corbin will try to get across the river and either hold the town or just escape. Let's see if the Chupacabras can stop them on turn 4. Here we are in turn 4. Before we get into this turn, I just want to point out that the Chupacabra player, when designing her combined arms company, had based it on the concept that the Wheeled Scouts and the Hatchmen would aggressively move onto a target and fix it to that location. And then the Grasshoppers would be able to maneuver to attack and get the kill. This turn, she tried to put her concept of the combined arms company to the test. So the 17th Lance activates, and the Hatchmen sprint towards the Fire Lance, while the Grasshopper ground moves up the hill. The 18th Lance did the same, the Hatchmen sprinting towards the enemy, and the Grasshoppers advancing on them. This sudden advance of melee capable mechs spooked the House Corbin players, who luckily had not yet activated their Fire Lance, or the Chupacabras would have attacked with special physical attacks. So House Corbin activates their Fire Lance and falls back. The Trebuchet jumped to create space, the Archer sprinted away for its life, and the Longbow, which is very slow, ground moved back. The Chupacabras wanted to keep the pressure on, but keep the enemy guessing at what she's going to do, so she had her Will Scouts stand still. Next, the 14th Lance pushes forward too, with the Wraith and Wasp jumping to the other side of the mansion from the Centurions. Blackjack also jumps forward into the Wasp's old position. The Locust then ground moves to the northern side of the mansion at point blank range of the Centurions. House Corbin players thought for a long time if they should stand and fight or withdraw. Stand and fight would be a loss. And to run away, well, they would take losses, but the majority of their forces would live to fight another day. So he activated his 18th Lance and sprinted across the river. Chupacabras activated the 13th and 15th lance, and ground moved, pressuring the center of the map, except for the Marauder, which armor was almost non-existent, decided to take cover. House Corbin was beginning to regret staying in position for turn 3, and feel like they're being punished for their greed. The 17th lance sprints back in order to make space and break line of sight with the water processing plant. We'll go through the shooting phase real fast for this one since most of the mechs couldn't fire at one another. The last sortie of the Heavy Striker was able to target and destroy the Camo Archer. The 
wheeled scouts and what few mechs that had line of sight fired at one of the Centurions. A blackjack and two scouts hit, removing all of the Centurions' armor. The grasshopper fired at the longbow, but missed. For House Corbin, only the longbow and trebuchet could shoot back, and they fired at the hatchetman on the hill. The longbow hit, removing the hatchetman's armor. This brings turn 4 to a close, with House Corbin losing a mech while falling back across the creek. The chupacabras are right on their heels. Will this turn into a rout, or will House Corbin hold strong? Let's get into turn 5. For turn 5, House Corbin won initiative, again. So the chupacabras will need to move and shoot first. The chupacabras activate their willed scouts, which stands still. The 15th lance, which continues their advance down the highway into cover to keep the pressure on House Corbin. However, House Corbin was considering not yet fully withdrawing from the battlefield. House Corbin's 18th lance fell back into the town, taking cover behind these residential buildings. Chupacabras activate the 13th and 14th lance, with the 14th lance consolidating a firing position at the mansion on the hill. And the blackjacks of the 13th lance stood still while the dasher and the wasp moved to the top of the hill to pressure House Corbin's fire lance. House Corbin realized his fire lance was in a lot of trouble. His longbow was too slow to escape, but it wasn't going down without a fight. The trebuchet jumps across the river and the longbow backs up to the river bank. Chupacabras activate their 17th and 16th lance. The 17th lance continues its pursuit of House Corbin's fire lance, and the 16th lance turns towards House Corbin's red heavy battle lance, which is taking cover behind the water processing plant. House Corbin activates his last unit, the Red 17th Battle Lance, and begins to cross the riverbank into the town. On to the shooting phase. The Dasher, the Wasp, and the 17th board fire into the Longbow. All hit, dealing 10 damage to the Longbow, needing a critical check, and it's a weapon destroyed, which will take effect next turn. Unfortunately, all the Heavy Striker sorties are complete, and they have returned to base. Therefore, the Willed Scouts, 18th, 15th, and the two Blackjacks of the 13th Lance fired at the two Centurions hiding in the town. The badly damaged Centurion was the first to drop, followed by that house. And then the other Centurion also went up in flames. However, both Centurions will be able to fire back this turn. Next, the Chupacabra's 14th Lance fired at House Corbin's 18th Heavy Battle Lance taking cover in town. It focused on the damaged Banshee, but only the Wraith hit dealing three more damage to its armor. House Corbin returns fire. The longbow, trebuchet, and the two banshees fire at the advancing chupacabras. The trebuchet hits the wasp, dealing three damage, which required a critical check, and it was ammo, but since it's an energy weapon only mech, no further damage is taken. The banshees missed, but the longbow hit the severely damaged hatchman, destroying it. The two downed Centurions fire at the Willed Scouts wanting to take something down with them, but sadly they missed. The 18th Lance returned fire against the Chupacabra mechs hiding behind the mansion on the hill, but missed all their shots. This brings turn 5 to a close. House Corbin lost two more mechs, and the Chupacabras lost one as well. Both sides have severely damaged mechs, but despite this, House Corbin is considering staying in the fight a little bit longer. With turn 6, the Chupacabra player won initiative, so House Corbin will move and shoot first this turn. House Corbin activates his fire lance and moves both mechs into cover. It was now the Chupacabra's turn to proportionally move, but she was hesitating to continue the attack. She had already lost 3 mechs, and will likely lose a whole lot more trying to cross the river and enter the town. The attack on Willingham was originally a force reconnaissance mission. The Chupacabra player was very surprised to find the town was only defended by one company, and therefore she thought she could easily overwhelm and take the town. But with the losses she has already sustained, and the likelihood of losing a whole lot more forces, led her to the decision to withdraw. The Chupacabras and the League forces just cannot afford too many losses on a battle that was just meant to be a distraction. Both sides continued to exchange long and extreme range fire with only a Banshee taking an extreme hit from the Stalker and the Wraith taking a hit from the Banshee. I'm sure there's a pun for a Wraith and Banshee fight somewhere. So House Corbin wins. They were able to turn back the Chupacabra's attack on Willowham. 
House Corbin lost four mechs. The mech warriors were all rescued by friendly forces, but are recovering and will be fit for duty next phase of the war. Chupacabras lost three mechs, and they were also able to recover their mech warriors, which are also in the hospital as well. The Chupacabra player was a little bummed from the battle, not necessarily from losing it, but from not getting the opportunity to use her hatchetman in melee combat. Ah well, there's always the next time. Alright folks, hope you enjoyed the battle report. Thanks for watching, and we'll see you at the next one.